All right, uh, this one from Vic J G. Uh, in light of the Austin Rivers tweet, Logan, I'm sure you at least got wind of this. This was the, uh, the, the NBA thing. NFL discussion uh, a couple weeks ago. Which commanders players past or present do you think could not just play, but dominate in the NBA? The answer is none of them. None of them could dominate in the NBA play in the NBA is a different story. Like th the first thing, like this, this was the most predictable cycle of, of uh, a silly sports argument because first you had a bunch of football players getting really, really mad. And saying like, oh, you never, uh, you couldn't go over the middle, whatever. And it's like, no, no, no. All the dudes that that we're talking about here are playing wide receiver. But yeah. also, when you flip it back the other way, like in order to play in the NBA, you basically need to be at least six foot three and less than two hundred and thirty pounds. And the number of dudes in the NFL that are greater than six foot three and less than two hundred and thirty pounds is pretty slim. And then, and then you need to have extremely high skill level if you especially if you're shorter than like six seven six eight which eliminates almost everybody because either like the tall dudes are o-linemen or receivers and the receivers like unless they're awesome basketball players uh and still then like if you're six four two twenty you're you're a monster nfl receiver you're an undersized like a NBA guard. two guard yeah, you're yeah. Like, a point guard, yeah. like it's just a height thing yeah, so that's a really uh, that's an interesting question. <clears throat> so I think you know, obviously Jordan Reed was a tremendous basketball player. Like he yep. could get out there, and his handles were awesome. And it felt like watching him that he could have played like college basketball somewhere. But I think he probably it's, could have. Yeah, it's no, a. I'm not saying a, the answer is zero. Dominate no, in the NBA. The answer is zero. Play in the NBA if they had they had dedicated the training to it. Jay Reed feels like a great call. I mean, the guy that I don't know if you know this, Trent Williams is an unbelievable Dude, basketball that was, player. That was what I was going to say, man. Like if there's one athlete that I think could do it, it's Trent. And because, it, again, it's, it's you know, Trent would have to get dedicate a lot of time to skill acquisition, all that kind of stuff. But if there was an athlete, like, I, I just don't think people understand, like, how special he was as a mover, as a jumper, as a sprinter. Like, his hand-eye coordination was incredible. Like, he could easily dunk a basketball when he was 330 pounds. So I think about him kind he of in do, the it, So I did a whole piece on, like, basically the mythology of Trent Williams athleticism. When I was on the beat, I like just uh -oh. went around the locker room and collected stories. And Adrian Peterson was there at the time. They were together at Oklahoma and he had a bunch, uh, including like they were playing freshman pickup basketball, like when they first got to Oklahoma and Trent's like out there just hanging out. He just, he's like still in his sweats and from standing underneath the rim, not like run up. Apparently he's standing underneath the rim and did like a 360 in between the legs dunk. Yeah, he, I saw him do that in slides at the, we had a walk through it at Lifetime Fitness and he was in slides and just walked up and like straight like yammed it from under the basket, like off a of vertical. Like he's, he was a incredibly special athlete. And I just yeah. think about his size and ability to move. Like one of the craziest things like I've seen, like so Trent weighed like 325 when this happened, but interception, he like tracks down the DB, is able to sink his hips and like uncoil on this guy, like in a way that looked like like a like a linebacker, you know, like he. So again, from an athlete perspective, like he's probably one of the only ones. Again, Jordan Reed's one that like again because he was so skilled and he just kind of had this natural. And he played flow. a lot of basketball, and he, yeah, like, and, he's and, a and he he credits that crossover, you know, move that he had to the basketball footwork that he had he had developed. Yeah. So again, like those are the two guys that come to mind, but I, I think, <clears throat> I think people don't understand like how specialized the NBA is now. You know what I mean? Like there's, I saw a statistic recently. I don't, I'm going to butcher it. So just bear with me, but like, <laughs> it, you know, like it's like something like the less than 0.01% of people in the world are over, over seven feet tall, but in the NBA, it's over 15%. You know what I mean? Like they've just yeah. accrued all these really like unusual body types for the sport. And there's a reason that, I, you know, like people don't talk about this enough in terms of youth athletic development, but there's a reason that like people become football players and there's a reason people become basketball players. Like I had a scholarship offer to play soccer, right? And I was 6'4", 215. But like, who's where am I going to make more money as a gigantic soccer, gigantic soccer player or like football player, like probably football player. So like those, those, that, that road diverges in the woods and it just kind of naturally selects like 
the tough kind of stockier guys go play football and the tall lanky guys that are really you know have great hand-eye coordination go play basketball and like that's just how yeah. it goes if, if you were going to be a great soccer player and make a lot of money you would have known by the time you were 15 years old right uh, like, like my, I, my I guy played in college like and i would have been that would have been yeah. cool you know like great college sure. player whatever but yeah. like well, like my guy gucci on you was also six four and um he was in like you know u.s national team camps 100%. by the age of you know 14 and wound up playing in a couple world cups like in in that sport you know early early because they tell you yeah um, and, and, I, and I think not like the d1's anything to sneeze at like that's incredible um but, but you can develop late all that kind of stuff but it's just different yeah. right it's just like and again like if i look at my skill set as a player like i was a hyper physical soccer player you know what i'm saying like obviously my my path was to a more physical sport right and i think like when you look at guys that play football at the highest level there's like a little bit of a screw loose right they're a little bit messed <laughs> up they're hyper physical they love contact and that's not basketball. And ba- not saying basketball is not a physical sport that's crazy no. challenging. It's just different. And I think basketball is um, a contact sport. Football is a collision sport. Right. Exactly. And I and I think it just naturally selects out. So you know, there's a reason there's not a bunch of seven foot tall offensive linemen because those dudes go play basketball because that's where the money is for seven foot tall dudes. Right. All right. Uh, this question from at no follower says. Logan, what's the funniest thing an opponent said to you during or after a play that made you bust out and repeat it in the huddle? Um, so a lot of stuff I can't say on this podcast, right? Sure. Because it's inappropriate for our I'm listeners. Sure. Um, but a couple of things, I just laughed at one of the things that a, a teammate said to me that I thought was hilarious, uh, but I can't say it here. But yeah, most of the time, like it's, um, <laughs> I can't, I can't even answer these questions because it's, it, they're so inappropriate. I can't talk about it. But basically, a lot of them have to do with, um, you know, stereotypes about being a white football player, right? And yeah, those comments tend to reflect that. And they're really funny. There's stories from college that I still crack up about of dudes, you know, saying things like that. But yeah, not nothing. That, I, I wish I could share them. But none of them are appropriate. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to lead you in some places that we've gone before, that maybe newer <laughs> listeners, um, because like you had some run-ins with like Von Miller. I feel yeah. like a Michael Strahan run-in early in your career. You definitely had some Demarcus Ware run-ins. Yeah, I don't. Mo- some of those were like play things versus yes, mo- most of those are play things. Because again, anything anybody says to you, it's not overly positive. You know what I'm saying? Like at least for me, it was like you know, hey, you're this big unathletic dude. Like, what are you doing here? Uh, one one of the ones that I still crack up to this day was uh, who's the corner that used to play for uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars? Um, they played They've for LA a for a while. For years. He played uh, Jalen Ramsey, right? So oh, it was yeah, like yeah. it was like the fourth preseason game, and I was wearing this like rookie out, just wearing him out, and I threw him into the bench, and I was just like, and I kind of was laughing to myself. And Jalen Ramsey was standing there, and he's eating his sunflower seeds, or he's eating a hot dog, or something. He's got his helmet on his side. He's like, look at you feeling all tough, you know, being in the league eight years and throwing a rookie into the bench. And I just started busting out laughing because it's true. It's like, what am I doing in this game? <laughs> Why am I playing? And it was just such a crazy juxtaposition. Like, and I think it's a perfect microcosm of the NFL because it's like, here he is, like making millions and millions of dollars eating seeds and just kind of like, like, what the hell? Like, why are you playing so hard? And it's like, here is me. Like, I'm trying to make this freaking team, like, chill out, bro. Like, this is how I'm yeah. going to do it, you know? And it just was this crazy, and it was really funny. Was good good for him, so. There you go. We got a, we got a good one. Got one okay. in, but yeah, got, all the other got, ones are inappropriate. One in. yeah, yeah, the other ones, um, you know, if we ever do an uncensored podcast that's not actually recorded, uh, perhaps we can tell some <laughs> yeah, of those stories. Yeah, because I can't even say, I, I, I can't say any of the, any no. of them, so. No. Um, all right, this one from Big John 1906 uh, Logan, more satisfying, a TD grab or a full speed collision where you hear the air leaving another man's body. Uh, and then he has a question for me too, which I can, I can answer in a second, but TD or just knocking somebody, uh, or perhaps throwing a rookie into the bench. Yeah. I mean, it's always fun, like physically imposing your will on another person, but some of those big collisions, man, like they're awesome. Like I love them. They're great, but they hurt so bad. You know what I mean? Like even the, even though you're coming out on top, the other guys on the ground, like you've hurt your, like you've given a little bit of your soul to the football yeah. gods. You know what I'm saying? Which is maybe satisfying if you do it every once in a while, but with the frequency that you had to because right. of who you were as a player, like 
that's too many pieces of your soul that you left in in on the field. Yeah, I've told this story before about the guy from you know the Colts uh, again, yeah. like just going battering Ram for the whole game. We got dented face masks, the whole thing. Like I remember that game extremely fondly. Like it's one of my proudest moments as a player. But I also know that like a little bit of my life is on that Colts field someplace. You know what I'm saying? Like a little bit of a couple brain cells couple of compressed discs and stuff. You know what I mean? Like it's there. And like, that's the sacrifice of those big hits. And those are awesome. And it's fun. It's fun. Like when you fall on top of a guy and you hear him go, you know, all those things are great, but there's something very like, and again, like I love that. And that's probably what I enjoy most, but um, there's something awesome. Like when I caught the touchdown um, against the Seattle Seahawks to go up 14 to zero in that playoff game in 2012, and the stadium is just electric and you and it's so loud it feels like you're kind of being like electrocuted your whole body's alive like there's nothing quite like that so i think they're both pretty fantastic uh in their own right um it just kind of depends on the mood you're in on the day <laughs> you know what i mean so i, I mean i again like I, I like them both but that touched again that touchdown in the playoff game again i know we lost that game but we were up 14-0 and that was the one that got us the 14 uh, that's pretty tough to beat in terms of emotional high uh, from a sporting event. Yeah, no, that 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 tracks. Uh, the question he had for me, this is such an easy answer. Um, Craig, if you never had to talk about one thing in the commander sphere again, what would it be? <laughs> so easy. What it's is the it? name? It's oh, the name. really? I yeah. thought you were going to say and Dan, maybe like that whole like no, because like I mean, in a way they're tied, but like it's just. I think it's the name because it's so polarizing. Mm. There are people that have extraordinarily strong opinions and those opinions are kind of based in like an identity level thing because Mm. for a lot of people, it is a proxy war for their politics Mm. and not to like take, we're fun, we're fun and light. And now I'm going serious. Now we're getting crazy over here. But like the reason is, is because people have such strong feelings and thus they also think that like, if you disagree with them, that you're like a terrible person. And that's, that's people on, on both sides, the pro bringing yeah. the old name back, anti bringing, like, I'm not making a judgment here because again, I don't want to talk about this ever again. Um, but there's also the reality that it's the name is never coming back. And so thus it, it's not even worth having the argument because it's not going to change. And so if I could just, and the, it, like, this is very fresh for me because last week there were a couple of stories that came out involving, the name, the old logo with Dan and the t-shirt. And then this, this Senator from Montana, who's holding things up on Capitol Hill from the RFK site. And like, I tried to talk about those things in a fairly like high level way where I wasn't really touching on the core argument of that. But if, if, if you like, it is so third rail that if you even remotely talk about anything related to that, whoosh there goes the comment section there goes the twitter replies there goes everything and people just feel so strongly and i get it like i I even get people that i I get it on every level like i i intellectually understand why it's happening but i don't enjoy it one bit um i i could talk about dan we can talk about dan right now did you see the story that happened yesterday with him in the movie Oh, he's, I don't know. I don't, I'm not, yeah, there's a, there's a movie about, uh, the former president that's being made that he donated a lot of money to, uh, Mm -hmm. or he helped fund, not donated. He helped fund because he thought it would be a fun portrayal. And then it turns out it's not a fun portrayal. And when he saw the movie at the Cannes film festival, he got really upset. And I'm like, okay, no matter again, what you think of like how that, you know, how he should be portrayed, whatever, the fact that Dan Snyder didn't do his homework and just gave people money right. and then like, it's just chef's kiss. Perfect. Yeah. I have no notes other than that is hilarious. Um, all right. Uh, last but not least, our guy to says, Logan, when you first put on the pads as a pro for rookie camp, did you notice a different from coach difference from coaches in treatment slash expectations based off draft status? Or does that immediately go out the window? And then he asked me, what is the best answer you've ever gotten to a routine post-game question? Oh, love that question. Uh, so, I do too. I, I got to try to think of an answer. Um, I've been trying to rack my brain, but yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll think uh, more while you, uh, you answer. So basically, absolutely. You know, absolutely there's a difference in terms of how they treat you. I know a lot of coaches say, oh, you know, we don't care about whether you're drafted or undrafted. It's just hard, man. Because like think about like with the drafted prospects, you've probably as a coach, there, there you get a list. 
you watch them, you've interviewed them, you've had conversations with them, you know them better, you have a vision, you've established a vision for how you're going to use this player. And for the undrafted guy, it's like, yeah, we want you here, but like there's no financial investment. There's no draft capital investment. It's like, here you go. You know, let's see if you can make the team. And I think they obviously pour more of their coaching time into the um, to the drafted guys or the, you know, the priority free agents or whoever it is. And it just comes down to like money and then personal relationships. And it's nobody's fault. Like it's just how the cookie crumbles. And, you know, the more, the longer I was in the league, the more I understood that, right? Like the more, like you, the first day of training camp or the first day of OTAs and you see here are the drafted guys, here are the undrafted guys. Like they just are different, you know, it's just a different pool. And it just is so hard to get from the undrafted pool into kind of like the cool kid crew. Like I remember when I was a rookie, just as a like a simple example, you know, you, you remember they have like those metal lockers in the locker room, right? For yeah. the 90 man roster. And those are all like undrafted guys that are in there, right? Like, so if you're drafted, like Trent had a normal locker, you know, Perry Riley had a normal locker, like I was in the, and so it's a visual difference. And again, that's totally fair because one, the, one's the, fifth pick overall and one's a third round draft pick. So I get it. I'm not saying yeah. I should have one, one they're expected to have long term and use that locker. The other they're expected to once they move those lockers, it's because you're not there anymore. Correct. Exactly right. And so that's just a simple kind of like, hey, like, you know, when I was in Chicago, they used to put the undrafted free agents in a different locker room just to give you some kind con- like talk about like, I don't care who you are like that's going to the coach is going to treat you a little different. So um, absolutely, 100%. And again, it's just part of the business and part of the dollars and cents of of the NFL. Yeah. Um, on my question, uh, what's the best answer you've ever gotten to a routine post-game question? I know that I've gotten really good answers at like press conferences and stuff that were like emotional based or tell a great story or whatever. I just can't think of them right now. The one that, that came to mind was that was just cool was Steven Sims Jr., um, the former receiver oh, yeah. here uh, and, and kick returner. Um, and it, it's a cool story because uh, my guy Clinton Yates uh, from ESPN, who's one of my best friends, texted me watching the game um, because Steven fumbled, I want to say it was a kickoff, like muffed it, picked it up, and then brought it to the house, which mm. is something that Deion Sanders had done. And so I asked, or Clinton was like, yo, he just pulled a Deion. And like, I went and found the clip and, and all that kind of stuff. And then I asked Steven Sims about that after the game. And I was basically like, like, did you know that was like a thing that Dion has done before? And he's like, yeah, that's the first thing I thought of. Cause Dion was like my hero growing up. Really? Um, and so wow. that was, that was definitely cool to like, you know, see a guy who modeled his return game after Dion, which why wouldn't you? He's one of the best to ever do it. Um, and have that very specific, like muff the kick, bring it to the house moment. Um, and for me, it was cool because, you know, one of my best friends, like who also is in the business, like kind of brought it to my attention as a thing. And so to, to connect all those dots was, was cool. So that's, mm. that's the answer that comes to mind. Um, I know I've probably gotten some, I wonder that Teresh, uh, Teresh is, is, a almost a co-producer of the pod sometimes because he has all this amazing like information that he tweets out. He's the one who like connects all the dots. Be like this guy was this guy's uncle who also blah, 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 blah. Um, So Teresh, if you got this far and you're listening, uh, you tell me what the answer is because you have such a ridiculous memory that I'm sure you remember some answer that someone gave to a question that I asked at some point in the last eight years of being here in DC. Um, But yeah, that's, that's one of the ones that, that comes to mind. Uh, great questions today. This was really fun. We will mm-hmm. definitely do another mailbag, a couple more mailbags, honestly, probably between now and training camp. Uh, we will have an OTA review for you later this week. Uh, this practice is open as we record this tomorrow. Uh, and then we are also going to talk to you. If you remember uh, all the pictures in the video of the, the guys having logs and carrying them around last week, that was just part of a team building exercise. We're going to talk to the people that put that on later this week and probably have that for you early next week as well. Uh, So make sure you're subscribed and uh, we appreciate you listening to Take Command. Thanks for watching this clip of Take Command, which has a brand new home. That's right. You can watch on YouTube at the Team 980. You can also listen to full episodes in the free Odyssey app, which is now enabled with Apple CarPlay. So we'll just, you know, follow you around. (laughs) 